The Shah Sanan was a saintly man in his day and had perfected himself to a high degree. For 50 years he had remained in his retreat with 400 disciples who worked on themselves day and night. He had great knowledge and benefited by outer and inner revelation. Much of his life had been spent in making pilgrimages to Mecca. His prayers and fasts were without number and he omitted none of the practices of the Sunnites. He could work miracles and his breath healed the sick and depressed. One night he dreamed that he went from Mecca to Greece and there worshiped an idol and waking grief stricken from this oppressive dream he said to his disciples i must set out at once for greece to see if i can discover the meaning of this dream with his 400 disciples he left the kaaba and in time arrived in greece they traveled from end to end of that country and one day by chance came to where a young girl was sitting on a balcony this girl was a christian and the expression of her face showed that she possessed the faculty of pondering on the things of god her beauty was like the sun in splendor and her dignity as the signs of the zodiac from jealousy of her radiance the morning star loitered above her house who caught his heart in her hair put on the belt of a christian whose desire lighted on the ruby of her lips lost his head the morn took on a darker tint because of her black hair the land of greece wrinkled up because of the beauty of her freckles her two eyes were a lure for lovers her arched brows form tender sickles over twin moons when power lighted the pupils of her eyes a hundred hearts became her prey her face sparkled like a living flame and the moist rubies of her lips could make a whole world thirst her languorous lashes were a hundred daggers and her mouth was so small that even words could not pass Her waist, slender as a hair, was squeezed through her zunnar, and the silver dimple of her chin was as vivifying as the discourses of Jesus. When she lifted a corner of her veil, the heart of the shaft took fire, and a single hair bound his loins with a hundred zunnars. He could not take his eyes from this young Christian. and such was his love that his will slipped from his hands unbelief from her hair strewed itself on his faith he cried out oh how terrible is this love that i have for her when religion leaves you of what good is the heart when his companions understood what had happened and saw the state he was in they held their heads in their hands some began to reason with him but he refused to listen he could only stand day and night his eyes fixed on the balcony and his mouth open the stars that glowed like lamps borrowed heat from this holy man whose heart was on fire his love grew until he was beside himself O oh Lord he prayed in my life i have fasted and suffered but never have i suffered like this i am in torment the night is as long and as black as her hair where is the lamp of heaven have my sighs extinguished it or has it hidden itself from jealousy where is my good fortune Why does it not help me to get the love of this girl? Where is my reason to make use of my knowledge? Where is my hand to put dust on my head? Where is my foot to walk to my beloved and my eye to see her face? 
Where is my beloved to give me her heart? What is this love, this grief, this pain? The friends of the Shah came again to him. One said, O worthy Shah, lift yourself up and drive away this temptation. Take hold of yourself and perform the ordained ablutions. He replied, Do you not know that this night I have made a hundred ablutions and with my heart's blood? Another said, Where is your chaplet? How can you pray without it? He replied, I have thrown away my chaplet so that I may girdle myself with the Christian Zunar. Another said, O saintly old man, if you have sinned, repent without delay. I repent now, he replied, of having followed the true law, and I only wish to give up that absurdity. Another said, Leave this place and go and worship God. He replied, If my idol were here, it would become me to bow down before her. Another said, Then you will not even try to repent? Are you no longer a follower of Islam? The Shaf replied, No one repents more than I, that I was not in love until now. Another said, The infernal regions are waiting for you if you continue on this path. But watch yourself and you will avoid them. He replied, If hell is there, it is only from my sighs, which would feed seven hells. Seeing that their words produced no effect on the shah, although they pleaded with him all night, his friends went away. Meanwhile, the Turk of the morning, with saber and golden buckler, cut off the head of Black Knight, so that the world of illusion was bathed in the radiance of the sun. The Shah, plaything of his love, wandered with the dogs and for a month sat in the street hoping to see her face. The dust was his bed and her doorstep his pillow. Then the beautiful Christian seeing that he was hopelessly in love, wheeled herself and went out and said to him, O Shah, how is it that you, an ascetic, are so drunk with the wine of polytheism and sit in a Christian street in such a state? If you adore me like this, you will go mad. The Shah replied, It is because you have stolen my heart. Either give it back or accept my love. If you wish, I will lay down my life for you, but you may restore that life by a touch of your lips. Because of you, my heart is on fire. I have shed tears like rain, and my eyes have lost their sight. Where my heart was, there is only blood. If I were united to you, my life would be restored. You are the sun, I the shadow. I am a lost man, but if you will incline to me, I will take under my wing the seven cupolas of the world. Do not leave me, I implore you. Oh, you old driveler, she said. Ain't you ashamed to use camphor for your winding sheet? You should blush for suggesting intimacy with me with your cold breath. You had better wrap yourself in a shroud than spend your time on me. Go away. The Shah replied, Say what you will, I still love you. What does it matter whether one is young or old? Love affects all hearts. She said, Very well. If you are not to be denied, listen to me. You must wash your hands of Islam. For love which is not identified with its beloved, is only color and perfume. He said, I will do all that you wish. I will undertake all that you command, you whose body is like silver. I'm your slave. Put a lock of your hair on my neck to remind me of my slavery. If you are a man of action, said the young Christian, you must do four things. 
prostrate yourself before the idols burn the quran drink wine and shut your eyes to your village he said i will drink wine to your beauty but the other three things i cannot do very well she said come and drink wine with me then you will soon accept the other conditions she led him to a temple of magicians where he saw a very strange gathering they sat down to a banquet at which the hostess was distinguished by her beauty his beloved handed him a cup of wine and when he took it and looked at the smiling rubies of her lips like two lids of a casket the fire blazed in his heart and a stream of blood rushed to his eyes he tried to recall the sacred books he had read and written on religion and the quran that he knew so well but when the wine passed from the cup into his stomach he forgot them all his spiritual knowledge was washed away he lost his free will and let slip his heart from his hand when he tried to put his hand on her neck she said you only pretend to love you do not understand the mystery of love if you are sure of your love you may find the way to my curled locks lose yourself in unbelief by the way of my tangled ringlets follow the locks of my hair and you may put your hand on my neck but if you do not wish to follow my way get up and go and take the cloak and staff of a fakir at this the amorous shah was crestfallen and now he yielded without more ado to his destiny the wine he had drunk made his head as uncertain as a compass the wine was old and his love was young how could he have been otherwise than drunk and in love o oh, splendor of the moon he said tell me what you wish if i was not an idolater before i lost my wits now that i am drunk i will burn the quran before the idol the young beauty said you are now really my man you are worthy of me till now you were uncooked in love but having acquired experience you are roasted good when the christians heard that the shah had embraced their faith they carried him still drunk into the church and told him to girdle himself with a sunnar he did this and threw his darvesh mantle into the fire or soak the faith and delivered himself up to the practices of the christian religion he said to the girl O oh, charming lady no one has ever done as much for a woman as i have done i have worshiped your idols i have drunk wine and i have given up the true faith all this i have done for love of you and that i may have you again she said to him o oh, driveler slave of love how can a woman such as i be united to a fakir i need silver and gold and since you have none take your head and go the shah said o oh, lovely woman your body is a cypress and your breasts are silver if you repulse me you will drive me to despair the thought of possessing you has thrown me into a turmoil on account of you my friends have become my enemies as you are so are they what shall i do o oh, my beloved i had rather be in hell with you than in paradise without you at last she relented and the shaft became her man and she too began to feel the flame of love but to try him further she said now for my dowry O oh, imperfect man go and look after my herd of pigs for the space of a year and then we shall pass our lives together in joy or sadness 
without a protest. This Shaykh of the Kaaba, this saint, resigned himself to becoming a Hogwart. In the nature of each of us, there are a hundred pigs. O oh, you who are non-entities, you are thinking only of the danger that the Shaykh was in. The danger is to be found in each of us. And it raises its head from the moment we start out on the path of self-knowledge. If you do not know your own pigs, then you do not know the path. But if you do set out, you will meet a thousand pigs, a thousand idols. Drive away these pigs, burn these idols on the plane of love, or else be like the Shah, dishonored by love. Well then, when the news spread that the Shah had become a Christian, his companions were in great distress, and all but one went away who said to him, Tell us the secret of this matter so that we may become Christians with you. We do not wish you to remain an apostate alone, so we will take the Christian Zunnar. If you do not agree, we shall return to the Kaaba and spend our time in prayer in order not to see that which we see now. The Shah said, My soul is full of sadness. Go where your wishes carry you. As for me, the church is my place, and the young Christian my destiny. Do you know why you are free? It is because you are not in my position. If you were, I should have a companion in my unhappy love. Return then, dear friend, to the Kaaba, for no one can share my present state. If they should ask about me, say, his eyes are full of blood, his mouth full of poison. He remains in the jaws of the dragons of violence. No infidel would consent to do what this proud Muslim has done by the effect of destiny. A young Christian has caught his neck in a noose of her hair. If they reproach me, say that many fall by the way on this road, which has neither beginning nor end, but some by chance will be saved from descent and danger. With this, he turned his face from his friend and went back to the herd. His followers, who had been watching from a distance, wept bitterly. Finally, they journeyed back to the Kaaba and ashamed and bewildered, hid themselves in a corner. Now in the Kaaba, there was a friend of the Shaykh who was a seer and who was on the true path. No one knew the Shaykh better than he, though he had not accompanied him to Greece. When this man asked for news, the disciples related all that had happened to the Shaykh. And they asked what ugly branch of a tree had pierced his breast and whether this had happened by the will of fate. They said that a young infidel had bound him with a single hair and barred him from the hundred ways of Islam. He dallies with her ringlets and freckles and has burned his khirka. He has forsaken his religion and now girdled with a zunnar. He looks after a herd of pigs. But though he has staked his very soul, we feel that there is still hope. Hearing this, the disciple's face turned the color of gold, and he began to lament bitterly. Then he said, Companions in misfortune, in religion there is neither man nor woman. When an unfortunate friend needs help, it sometimes happens that only a single person in a thousand can be of use. He then reproached them for leaving the shah and said, that they should even have become Christians for his sake. He added, A friend must remain a friend. It is in misfortune that you discover on whom you can rely, for in good fortune you will have a thousand friends. Now that the shah has fallen into the crocodile's jaws, 
everyone stays away from him in order to keep their reputation. If you shun him because of this strange happening, you will have been tried and found wanting. We offered to stay with him, they said, and even agreed to become idolaters. But he is an experienced and learned man, and we trust him. So when he told us to go, we returned here. The faithful disciple replied, If you really wish to act, you must knock on the door of God. Then, by prayer, you will be admitted to his presence. You should have been pleading with God for your shaft, each reciting a different prayer. And God, seeing your bewildered state, would have given him back to you. Why have you refrained from knocking at the door of God? At this, they were ashamed to raise their heads. But he said, This is no time for regrets. Let us go now to the court of God. Let us lie in the dust and cover ourselves with the garment of supplication that we may recover our leader. The disciples at once set out for Greece and having arrived there, remained near the shaft. For forty days and forty nights they prayed. During these forty days and forty nights, they neither ate nor slept. They tasted neither bread nor water. At last the power of the prayers of these sincere men made itself felt in heaven. Angels and archangels and all the saints robed in green on the heights and in the valleys now arrayed themselves in the garments of mourning. The arrow of prayer had reached its mark. When morning came, a musk-laden zephyr blew softly upon the faithful disciple at prayer in his cell, and the world was unveiled to his spirit. He saw the Prophet Muhammad approaching, radiant as the morn, two locks of hair falling upon his breast. The shadow of God was the sun of his countenance. The desire of a hundred worlds was attached to each of his hairs. His gracious smile drew all men to him. The disciple rose up and said, O messenger of God, the guide of all creatures, help me. Our shaykh has strayed. Show him the way. I implore you in the name of the Most High. Muhammad said, O oh, you who see things with the inner eye, because of your efforts your pure desires shall be gratified. Between the Shaykh and God there has been for a long time a black speck. But I have poured out the dew of supplication and have scattered it on the dust of his existence. He has repented and his sin is wiped away. The faults of a hundred worlds can disappear in the vapor of a moment of repentance. When the ocean of goodwill is moved, its waves wash out the sins of men and women. The disciple uttered a cry that moved all heaven. He ran and told his companions the good news. Then, weeping for joy, hastened to where the shah was keeping the pigs. But the shah was as a fire, as one illumined. He had cast off the Christian belt, thrown away the girdle, torn the bonnet of drunkenness from his head, and renounced Christianity. He saw himself as he was, and shedding tears of remorse, lifted his hands to heaven. All that he had forsaken, the Qur'an, the mysteries and prophecies, came back to him and he was delivered from his misery and folly. They said to him, Now is the hour of gratitude and thankfulness. The Prophet has interceded for you. Thanks be to God that he has lifted you out of an ocean of pitch and placed your foot on the way of the sun. The Shah thereupon resumed his khirka, performed his ablutions, and set out for the Hijaz. While this was happening, the Christian girl saw in a dream the sun, 
descending to her and heard these words follow your shaykh embrace his faith be his dust you who are soiled be pure as he is now you let him in your way enter now in his she woke a light broke on her spirit and she longed to set out on her quest her hand seized her heart and her heart fell from her hand but when she realized that she was alone and had no idea of the way her joy was changed to weeping and she ran out to throw dust on her head then she started out in pursuit of the shaykh and his disciples but growing weary and distraught covered with sweat she threw herself on the ground and cried out may god the creator forgive me i am a woman disgusted with life do not strike me down for i struck you in ignorance and through ignorance committed many faults forget the ill i have done i accept the true faith an inner voice apprised the shaykh of this he stopped and said that young girl is no longer an infidel light has come to her and she has entered our way let us go back one can now be intimately bound to one's idol without sin but his companion said now what is the use of all your repentance and remorse are you going back to your love he told them of the voice he had heard and reminded them that he had renounced his former ways so they went back until they came to where the girl lay her face had gone the color of yellow gold her feet were bare her dress torn as the shaft bent down to her she swooned away when she came to herself her tears fell like dew from roses and she said i am consumed with shame because of you lift the veil of the secret and instruct me in islam so that i may walk in the way when this fair idol was at last numbered among the faithful the companions shed tears of joy but her heart was impatient to be delivered from sorrow o oh, shaykh she said my strength is gone i wish to leave this dusty deafening world farewell shaykh sanan i confess my faults pardon me and let me go so this moon of beauty who had had no more than half a life shook it from her hand the sun hid itself behind the clouds while her sweet soul separated itself from her body she a drop in the ocean of illusion had returned to the true ocean we all leave as the wind she is gone and we also shall go such things often happen in the way of love there is despair and mercy illusion and security though the body of desire cannot understand the secrets adversity cannot knock away the polo ball of good fortune one must hear with the ear of the mind and the heart not with that of the body the struggle of the spirit with the body of desire is unending lament for there is cause to mourn